to answer, ask any questions that you, you might have. Um, I've also got two colleagues with me. Um, hopefully, um, I've got Mr. Connor with us, who will be talking about the approach to remote learning. And I've also got Mr. Scaife, who will be talking about um, keeping your children safe and so on. So uh, we're now recording. So the first thing is just to say uh, welcome. Um, my name is Liam Collins and I'm the principal. And it seems really odd that um, coming into the second term in a year group, I've not had the opportunity to meet. Um, parents. Normally by this point in a school's life, I would have met m parents multiple times in multiple different situations. But of course, this year has been like no other, although we're now in 2021. And I think this part or this start of a year has been like no other. So just to kind of give you some background, as you're aware, just before we broke up uh, for Christmas, we had multiple uh, bubble bursts, as they're known. And we had year seven, year eight, year nine, year 11 and the sixth form all self-isolating at home. The only year group that we had in for the last week of term were the year 10s. Um, and then uh, just before the end of the week, um, we were told by the government that we were going to be setting up a mass testing centre in the school. And that because of that, we could take an additional inset day, which we took on the Friday. Um, at that point, we had no details whatsoever about the testing centre and we had no idea how that would work. So we went into Christmas and, of course, at that point for us in Rother and Hastings, we were in tier four. So Christmas had already um, uh, been changed beyond all recognition for all of us. Um, and we had to be as careful as we could in terms of our social mixing. I'm sure we all watched uh, with some degree of um, horror the rates of uh, COVID going up in our areas um, and then um, news about the hospitals filling up and then sadly about um, the loss of life from this uh, awful virus. Um, so I, I waited until the absolute last minute, which I thought was going to be the 30th of December to let you know how we were going to be returning to school. And I sent you out a letter explaining what I thought was going to happen. And of course, um, as has happened in this time, uh, that was superseded by an announcement on New Year's Eve, uh, which told us that the only groups of students that would be returning to school straight after Christmas were the exam groups, as that was year 11 and the sixth form. And all other student groups would be starting later, although that date hadn't been decided at that point. So I had to write to all of you again on New Year's Eve. And it was the reason I chose the 30th to write to you, because I felt, in my opinion, it's quite rude to send out communication on New Year's Eve. But Unfortunately, that's what we had to do. Uh, and then we went into the weekend expecting that we would have three days of inset to set up the testing centre that we now knew how what we had to do and also to set up um, our remote learning and think about how we were going to socially distance our exam groups. Um, then we were told um, right at the beginning of term that they had decided to go into a national lockdown. And so then we very quickly had to start planning for complete remote learning. Um, along with the testing centre, along with a dialogue about some of the vocational exams running inside the school and setting up a community school. And that all happened in the first week. Um, and if you can imagine um, going from not running a, a community school and a remote school to running one um, in a very short space of time um, has brought with it a huge amount of challenge. And I would like to thank uh, my colleagues in the school who, who I believe have done their absolute best to get this up and running as quickly as possible. That's not to say there aren't teething problems. So um, I'm just going to quickly check. Uh, yes, I'm now going to hand over to Mr. Connor, who will talk a little bit about remote learning. Um, and if he wants to, he can talk about some of the changes that are happening next week, or he can leave that to me. Mr. Connor. Thank you, sir. Um, so, as Mr Collins has explained, uh, we've shifted to uh, online learning now, which is a completely different way of working for both uh, teachers and students. Um, and the students will follow their normal timetable. So they will have tutor time in the morning at 8.45, uh, followed by periods one to five throughout the day. Now, as Mr Collins has just alluded to, um, we've trialled that this week and we trialled full one hour lessons um, and the feedback that we've been getting both from parents, students and staff is that 
uh, the full hour sat in front of a computer for five hours a day is quite a challenge for, for everybody involved. So from Monday, we will shift to 45 minute lessons, giving the students and the staff a 15 minute break in between lessons so they can get away from the screen, make themselves a cup of tea um, and just get a bit of a rest from screen time. The lessons will start at the normal time. Um, so at 9.15 for period one and 10.15 for period two and so on. Uh, it's just they will finish 15 minutes earlier so that uh, all parties involved can get a break. So uh, we're a week into this now, so I'm, I'm sure your students have been accessing it and have been able to uh, get online, but they access Teams just like you've done this afternoon. They're put into a lobby, the teacher enters them into the classroom, and then the, the, the lesson is followed up by uh, an exposition from the teacher where they're explaining what today's new learning will be, some checking for student understanding, and we're trialling lots of different methods and ways of doing this, uh, including using the chat function, using the hands up function, all sorts of ways that we're getting feedback from students to check that they understood what's going on. Uh, and then the teacher will more than likely direct them to a task or a piece of work that needs to be completed. Uh, and that should take the, the, the hour this week or the 45 minutes next week uh, for the students to complete. They then submit that back to the, to the teacher and the teacher gives them various feedback throughout the lesson uh, in various different ways. So you uh, need to bear with us. Um, it is a new way of working, as I said, for all of us. Uh, there are a few teething issues, but on the whole, it's been quite a positive experience, I would say, for, for students and staff. Um, but the, we're all learning how to use this new medium in terms of delivering our lessons. So any feedback uh, will be gratefully received. Uh, and I'm going to hand over to Mr Scaife. Hello, good afternoon everyone. Um, the first thing, my name is Mr Scaife. I am the Associate Principal here at Arc Alexandra. Um, the first thing for me to say is thank you. Um, thank you really, really um, from the heart actually. it's It's been a very turbulent time um, for us all. Uh, but the support that's coming from families is immense. Um, our data and our records are demonstrating and showing that the, the level of engagement that we're getting from our students, your children, is really, really high. Um, and that's down to you as supportive families and supportive parents and carers. So thank you for that. Um, I think we know from the first lockdown the importance of routine and keeping into healthy routines in order to combat loneliness and boredom and to reduce the onset of mental health issues um, that comes with being locked down and under such restrictive um, measures. So thank you for that again. Um, we know from what we've heard from Mr Collins and Mr Connor that the importance of this is to reduce and to minimise the, the onset of gaps occurring in, in our kids' Um, in our kids' education, in their learning. So, so thank you again, and please keep up the good work. Please keep harassing them. Please keep encouraging them to, to log on on time as per their normal timetable, because I can assure you they're, the Im, it's having a wonderful impact um, in terms of their engagement, in terms of their routines. Um, and as I've touched on, the importance of why um, where we're monitoring their engagement is because we want to make sure and keep tabs to make sure that they're engaged, that they're enjoying their learning, albeit from home, that they're still making progress and their teachers are still really, really thinking carefully um, about how best to support them from, from a remote perspective. Um, so they are always at the forefront of our minds. Um, and, you know, with that comes us making sure that they're that they're OK. And the systems that we've got in place will have teething issues. And I do apologise in advance for some of those teething issues if you have been bombarded with with texts and, and such like. Uh, but that they are in place to ensure that for number one, our obligation in terms of ensuring that your children are safe and that they are well and that they are preoccupied and that they are busy. Um, albeit with making sure that there is respite and time away from the computer screens and that balance being struck is, is the forefront of, of our minds and our, our absolute obligation to your children. Um, so 
we don't apologize for caring we don't apologize for them being in the forefront of our minds at all times okay so just so you know we really do care and really want to make sure that everyone's okay from from a remote perspective in terms of their engagement to lessons that's how we're tracking um safeguarding that's how we're tracking their their uh, attendance so please do make sure that if there is an issue in terms of a device or Wi-Fi or, or a multitude of other issues, please do keep in contact with us. Please do let us know. We have teams in place in order to support from a remote perspective. So all you need to do is to send us an email through the info at Arc Alexandra um, email account or give us a ring. And we have people on standby to to do our very best in getting back to you to make sure that we resolve any issues that are within our power to do so. Um, so that's it from me. The key, the key points are please keep those routines going. If there is or if there are any issues that you're facing, that your child is facing, please don't hesitate to give us a call or send us an email and we do our very best to, to resolve them for you. Thank you. Um, thank you. I've seen one hand go up. I'm just going to apologise now that all I can see is the name that you've got on the screen. So I have seen that um, Sue has put her hand up and I'll come to you in a moment, um, Sue. Um, one other thing really to mention at this point is that um, most of us um, within the SLT are also parents. Um, my Both my children go to the school that I was previously the head teacher at. Um, and so we are seeing how hard it is to work and look out for children at the same time and so we do recognize how how hard that is just going back to the texting system um i had to set out at the beginning to ensure that our most vulnerable children were looked out for and were uh, making sure that we could check that they were logging in and keeping up with the work and so on unfortunately the system we have we can't separate students we either have one system for everybody or we have no system for everybody so I completely and utterly understand that some of the frustration that happened at the beginning of the week, the tone of the text message, the numbers of the text messages when you were looking at your child being in the lesson, etc., cetera, was, was frustrating. But I do want you to know that really was done from the best intention to make sure our most vulnerable children were online. But the upshot has been that we've now reached a point where we're almost uh, at 90 percent. So that means in all year groups, 90 percent of the students are online and engaging with the work that they're they are doing. All of them are unless we've got a member of staff who's unwell or their device has collapsed. All of them are getting um, some form of live teaching. And I'm sure any of you who know children in other schools, including my own children, you'll know that that is incredibly unusual um, in East Sussex at this moment in time. Uh, and again, we're trying to ensure that that all of our children are not losing any learning. So we're going to come to some questions um, now. As I said, if it's a um, if you want to do a verbal question, if you can keep it more general and if it's specifically about an issue that you've got with your own devices, if you can put those into the into the chat room, we can come back to you. But Sue, you were the first person with your hand up. Yeah. Oh, hello. Can you hear me? OK. I can. Hi, I'm, I'm really pleased about you cutting the lessons down to 45 minutes, but I'm very, very concerned about the e by the time the school finishes, we don't get long to actually exercise and get out of the house. Mm -hmm. And I'm I think it would be better if you could make lunchtime at least an hour, an hour and a half so we could get out at, in the middle of the day. OK, um, uh, the simple reason for that. Um, we can't do that, Sue, is that would require us to completely rewrite the timetable. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm certain that doesn't sound like it's a particularly complicated thing to do. But obviously, the change of those times would then impact on all of the lessons uh, and so on. Um, but we do recognise that they are sat in front of the screens for far too long and we are looking at different ways to try and enable them to get out and exercise. Um, okay. Obviously, the afternoon lesson now will finish at three, so that will give us a little bit of extra time. Um, okay. But we do, but we do recognise that. Okay, it's just that I mean, the last lockdown we had lighter evenings, so we could get out after school. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, just you know, today no. it, you know, it seems we're full on with screen yeah. and, and they're not um, getting out at all. 
no we i again i would completely agree with you um and it's something that we're looking to and we started with the absolute desire to make sure that every lesson was taught and i think we're hearing from parents that actually they could do with some additional breaks and so on we're looking okay. at PE lessons so thank you for the feedback and i, I would say watch this space because it, it is something that we definitely will take on board okay thank you thank you and then uh, the next person with their hand up is all i can see here is mac Boule. i'm sorry if i've mispronounced yeah. that yeah, so my mom is not here right now, but I want to say something. Today, I don't have my old lessons, but mm -hmm. he said he didn't join the lesson. School message me, and then he says he didn't join the lesson. Yeah. I don't know why. But... Okay, which lesson was that? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, it, it can be just from a simple mistake. Um, and we do go back and check. There's no um, detriment to yourself. There's not a, um, a thing that's going to have anything to do with your attendance on it. This is for us to just keep a check on how things are going, but we do make mistakes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, any other raised hands? Oh, I have, yes. Uh, Mr. French. Uh, hello there, Mr. Collins. Thank you. Um... I've spoken to my daughter and she seems to be struggling quite a bit with focusing. Um, okay. You know, with the online learning. Yeah. Is there, I mean, do you have any suggestions for parents like myself? Yeah. Um, that we might be able to do? Or is there anything that you might be able to help with? I mean, my daughter specifically is on the spectrum. Okay. Uh, she doesn't have a healthcare plan or school plan or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um. So, you know, it is a bit of a concern because obviously yeah, we received the reports today mm -hmm. um, and we spoke to her about it and she said she's just struggling quite a yeah. bit at times to focus, even though she's in a quiet environment and that lot, mm -hmm. um, she finds it difficult. And what's your daughter's name? Zayana. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get someone from one of our teams to just give you a call next week. Yep. I would say, though, Mr. French, my daughter is in year 12 as well. And my daughter had a wee bit of a meltdown yesterday in regards to her own motivation. I think there's an element here of it's hard to have intrinsic motivation to get on with work yourself is something that you tend to develop over time. So we do recognise that it's um, that it's difficult. My suggestion would be more than anything else is to keep regular breaks going. If things are getting um if there's lessons that she enjoys and finds that she can focus on those, then maybe do a couple of those together rather than a different lesson. Um, but if you can let us know, then we can look at when she's engaging and then maybe add some additional support in for her. But I think coming off the screen time, I think will be good. Doing a bit of a walk around will help in between the lessons. Uh, I think that will also um, enable you to, to to help a little bit more, but I do recognise that it's in, incredibly difficult, um, yeah. and that's certainly something that I'm I'm dealing with at home myself at this moment in time with a year eight daughter. So I, I do recognise it, but I think talking to her and just getting from her lessons that she finds easier to focus in, then we can find out what's going in the, going on in those lessons and see if we can adjust the other ones to be a bit closer to them. Lovely, much appreciated. Okay. All thank right, you, I look Mr. forward French. to somebody calling me uh, next week. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, Mr. Perry is next. Oh, thanks, Mr. Collins. Um, it's just a quick question. We were a bit confused. Um, we got uh, an email. I, it had your name at the bottom, but it might have been a generic one about um, uh, assessment results for our year eight daughter. Yeah. Um, just come out in the last day or so. Mm -hmm. um, could you give us a bit of guidance? It says in your email that the scores are what she would get at yeah. year 11 if she was sitting in GCSEs, but she's a clever girl and there's quite a few fours and fives in there that we're mm -hmm. a bit like, oh gosh, about. Okay. Um, does everybody have the same understanding of what the um, scoring is supposed to be? Is she set, set up for getting fours and fives? Um, I'm just going to check in with Mr. Connor on this one. Hello there. Yeah. So um, the grades that the students have received are what we call age related grades. Um, now, at GCSE, they receive grades nine to one. Um, it, however, we understand that year eight students are not going to get 
at necessarily a grade nine at GCSE level in year eight. Um, so rather than going into sort of negative numbers, so to speak, and say, oh, there are there are minus four, but if they carry on going, they could get up to a certain grade. What we what we do instead is uh, what's called an age related grade. So it, um, it says that if a student is getting a grade four in year eight and then they go on to get a grade four in year nine, that that grade four in year nine is uh, a level up. It's, it's a harder grade four because uh, they're progressing towards um, their, their final grade at, G at GCSE. So it's an age related grade, which means um, that if if they continue making the progress that they should, that would be a possible grade that they get in year 11. However, what it's, it's important to bear in mind is that the assessment and the grade that they've got this time doesn't necessarily cover the full range of subjects and um, the full range of content that a subject covers. Uh, and this grade in particular uh, was hampered slightly by various uh, closing of bubbles in year eight. And so um, it may be slightly lower than you anticipated, and it only covered a short amount of, of learning that was covered in the autumn term. So I, I wouldn't be too worried at this stage, but if you are concerned, the best person to contact is uh, your student's form tutor. Uh, I, would okay. just, I would just add to that, Mr Perry, is that um, it is, it's very hard to work out how best to communicate progress. And as a parent, as I've said, I've just had a set of reports in from my son's school, uh, which I have to say were, were slightly confusing as well. I tend to make a really big look at the effort grade or the attitudes to learning grade. That's the one that's really important in, in terms of what's going to be the thing that's going to get them through to the best grades possible. But I would just reiterate to with what Mr Connor has said, there is so much in a GCSE that you can only get graded for really as you get into the end of year 10 and into year 11. And that's where all of the higher grades sit. Um, so, but I would, yeah, I would definitely say that if you are concerned about it, get in contact with the form tutor and then we'll, we'll get out and speak to some of the teachers and get you some better feedback. Okay, thank you. Um, I, it just, um, I don't know, it's not very encouraging for the kids that's all if you're if if what the system means is slightly lower grades for year eight mm -hmm. um, because of the way it's configured uh, then it just means they're thinking oh I tried really hard but I only got a four yeah I, I again I have to say Mr Perry this is my first term in the school there is um, lots of things that um, I might want to look at as we go through uh, I've worked in lots of different systems. Uh, I wouldn't say there's a system that does work for every student in every way. Um, it's one of those ones that's quite it's quite difficult to give a good amount of information from a grade that the parents and the student can can fully understand. But I do recognise this. But again, I will take this uh, feedback and we will have a look at how we're assessing students and how we're communicating with parents on it. Thank you. OK, um, I think it's Mr Warren. Hello, um, I was just wondering if I could also have a telephone call maybe sometime next week with regards to my son's learning. Yeah, um, of course. And then also he got um, an X on one of his um, lessons. I didn't know what the X meant. I know he, he struggles and he's at like ones and twos and whatever, but Okay. Um, he's got an X on one. Okay, and what's his name? Tyler Warren. Oh, it is Tyler. Sorry, yeah. that's that's why. Okay. Um, no. Yes, I'll I'll get I'll get someone to give you a call next week to to uh, to run through that assessment. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then I've got um, I think it's Adinyinka. Again, apologies if I've mispronounced that. Oh, thank you, Mr. Collins. Um, first and foremost, I want to appreciate you for doing an incredible job. You know, uh, during this, uh, you know, this uh, period in time, uh, I will really want to appreciate you because it's not easy. Um, uh, I just have only one of my questions has been partially answered. Mr. Perry has asked that question: Is that mm -hmm. uh, 
since all these children are going to be, you know, to be learning remotely, that how do you monitor their progress? That is yeah. that one I partially answered. But what I'm really what I'm really interested in is that, you know, in class, you know, if if you're teaching me something and I don't understand it, I can ask you a question. Sure. Will there be opportunity for these children also to ask questions? Some of these children can be very shy. You yeah. know, and they may not want to hold other people back. Mm -hmm. So, what? How do we? How do we deal with, uh, with that type of situation? Thank you. Sure. Okay. I think there's multiple ways, and again, I think I think you're going to have to bear with us a little bit. There are some staff that are very confident in using Teams, and know how to use the mute all and unmute all very uh, adeptly, so they can ask students directly how they're doing and get a response. There are staff that are using the hands up uh, part of Teams, which is lots of you have done today, which is the icon at the top. Um, unsurprisingly, it looks like a hand. Um, mm -hmm. There are also um, uh, breakout rooms that that were quite, uh, I think, what's the word, quite crude before, but they're now uh, much more subtle in terms of how you can use those with group work within a within a classroom. Um, mm -hmm. So there are multiple ways within the lesson, as long as the member of staff is confident enough to be able to use them. If you still get to the end of a lesson and your child is confused, the best thing I can suggest is they email the teacher uh, and just ask the question to the teacher. And I know that our members of staff will get back to you in regard to in regards to an answer. Um, again, it's just not perfect at this moment in time. And I think like our children, our staff are We've got staff that are super confident using Teams, and then we've got staff who are a little bit more nervous. And I'm sure Mr. Connor um, uh, and Mr. Scaife will tell you that I am not the, the best person using Teams, but I am learning. And so that's what we're doing in the background. But we are looking at lots of different ways of checking progress. One of the things that we're talking about, especially in year seven and eight, is using online um, uh, testing. So things like cahoots, uh, things like multiple choice questions, and we're also looking at an app today, which is called Whiteboard. So the students can actually write on an app their answer and the teacher can see those answers. And um, they can't see each other's answers. They can only see the ones that um, the teacher can see everybody, but they can't see everybody else's. So again, it's another way of us just assessing as we go along. We're aiming to get to the end of this period with very little drop down, drop out in in the knowledge of the students and their ability with the students. And that's the reason why we took the decision to go online teaching with all lessons. Um, and of course, you know, that's a huge undertaking um, with, I think, you know, if you can think about it, it, it can be up to about 130 teachers logging in at the same time and then 1400 students logging in at the same time. It's, it's a huge under undertaking. Um, but if you think of ideas that we can improve on, then please feel free to email me. Um, as you can already tell, we've been listening to parents in regards to the length of the lessons. We're listening to parents in terms of making sure um, that we are enabling students to ask questions. Um, but yeah, please just keep suggestions coming in. Uh, the staff have been great in adapting and so on, but um, uh, it, just feedback is the best thing that you can do. Yeah, um, sorry. I've got uh, I've been trying to get, um, I've been trying to find out how I can get the syllabus of these children. Okay. You know, I mean, my, my daughter is in year eight. Yeah. You know, because I could, I could help her at home. Sure. You know, yeah, some well, of these... strangely enough, it's something that I've, I've spoken, all of the departments before Christmas completed what all the students would be learning this half term. So I've asked the heads of department just to check that to make sure that it's still relevant, because obviously um, heads of departments may have decided to change the sequence of learning because of going from um, classroom teaching to online learning. But I am going to be producing that for all of the all of the year groups, all of their lessons. So you will actually be able to see what they're learning over this half term and therefore you'll be able to help. OK. Um, I've got one more hand, which is uh, Miss Ewins. Um, good afternoon. Hi. I appreciate what you're saying that some teachers aren't as confident with teams, but could maths be looked at? Because 
just saying to the children, watch videos, and then if they're still not understanding it, they're being sent more videos to watch. Personally, it's more helpful if they can log back into the Teams meeting and talk to the teacher direct so she can or he can fully understand issues children are having. I just think keep telling a child to watch a video is mm -hmm. not helpful. OK, I, I will definitely look into that. But again, the difficulty is, is that obviously if you're standing in a classroom, you can catch the eye of a student and understand that. And we haven't got that ability at this moment in time. And some of that is down to the confidence of members of staff in using the system. Um, it's also the confidence of the students to raise their hands or put something in the chat room. Um, but I will look into that for you, Mrs. Jones. Thank you. OK, um, so we've come to the end of our, our time here today. Please feel free to ask any questions uh, it, um, you would like in the chat room. Um, it's simply clicking on the um, speech bubble at the top of the screen. When you roll, hold your cursor, over, it says show conversation um, and that we can pick up any questions in there um, that you might have. I'd like to thank you all for your time this evening. Uh, we will be doing this again so that we can see where we've got to in terms of some of the things that you're saying and, and some of the solutions that we can come up with. Um, all I can say to you is that we we are listening uh, and we, we are doing our absolute best to get this as right as we possibly can. Um, but your feedback is just much appreciated. And um, I think we will get there um, for this part of lockdown. How long this goes on for, I think all of our guesses are as relevant as each other's. We just know that uh, we are attempting day by day to get slightly better. And then hopefully by the end of this, we will be um, everything will be right. And all our students and all of your children are happy getting on with things, being able to exercise, doing different things as well as their lessons during the day. Um, but thank you so much for your time. Uh, and I look forward to the time when hopefully we can actually meet in person um, and have a conversation a face to face uh, without a face mask on, without having to worry about social distancing. Um, but just a final thank you. Um, as I said, I do know as a parent how difficult this is for you as well. Um, and is, if there's anything we can do to help and support you, um, please let us know whether you think a parent guide to certain lessons or uh, ways that you can help your children. We can look into that uh, as well. But thanks again for your time and um, hopefully I'll see you all very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.